Hello! In this video, we are going to discuss how to conduct a hypothesis test for testing to see whether data follows a uniform distribution. Here we are talking about frequencies and therefore proportions. So we're testing whether all the frequencies are the same, which is equivalent to all the proportions are equal. The uniform distribution is when all the frequencies and proportions are the same. This is a chi-squared test. So we'll be talking about the chi-squared test statistic and the chi-squared distribution. Let's first look at the example. Each of the digits in a raffle is thought to have the same chance of occurrence. That means it would follow a uniform distribution. The table shows the frequency of each, each digit for consecutive drawings in a California lottery. So notice here, the digits are 0 through 9. You have 10 digits, 0 through 9. And out of 280 drawings, we have the distribution of the different digits in those 280 drawings. We want to test the digits follow a uniform distribution. So we can either say in the null hypothesis follows a uniform distribution, or we can say all frequencies are equal, all proportions are equal, P1 equals P2 equals P3 equals all the way up to P10. I am going to write all proportions are equal. Um, and then I will say at least one proportion is different. When we do a chi-squared test, what we are comparing is our observed frequencies, and that's the data that was collected, with expected frequencies, what you would expect to collect, or how the frequencies would be distributed under your assumption in the null hypothesis. So if I'm assuming that these are uniformly distributed, I would expect each of the categories to have the same frequency. Hence, the expected frequencies are all the same, and it's simply the sum of the frequencies divided by the number of categories. Here we have 280 is the frequency, and we have 10 categories. So each expected frequency will be 28. I will go ahead and copy this all the way down. There we go. And if you even wanted to double check that you did things correctly, you could do an auto sum here because you should have, of course, the same total as in your observed frequencies. Now we are going to work on computing the chi-squared test statistic. The chi-squared test statistic is basically a sum of these proportional differences, these relative differences here as proportions. O stands for observed frequency. E stands for expected frequency. We find the difference between these, because that's what we're trying to do, is determine how close they are to each other and whether the differences are statistically significant enough to say that they are indeed different. So we take the difference, but to make it positive, we square it. So we've got a square difference, and then we look at it as, at it as a ratio to the expected frequency. Everything here thus is positive, and the actual chi-squared test statistic we're going to use will be the sum of all these ratios for each category. So let's write a formula to compute the ratios here. Very simple, observed minus expected, close the parentheses so that the subtraction is performed before the squaring and the division. We will now square it by raising it to the second power, and then we divide by the expected. We will go ahead and copy this formula all the way down for all the categories, which are all the digits. The chi-squared test statistic here, our chi-squared test statistic is the sum of these ratios. So let's go to 
auto sum and find that. 14.2149. All right. So what does that mean as a chi-squared test statistic and the chi-squared distribution? Well, let us look at what a chi-squared distribution looks like. So the chi-squared distribution we're going to look like will be a dist distribution describing the sum of these differences here. Notice that, or I should say the sum of these ratios of differences. And notice that since we're squaring, everything is positive here. So in the chi-squared distribution, everything is positive. The bigger the difference here, the larger the ratio and the larger the sum. So large numbers would be further in the tail than smaller ones. And so we need to determine if 14 is considered large. And to do that, we'll find the p-value, which is the area in the tail as described by this test statistic. Now, a um, chi-squared distribution is a right-skewed distribution. So the chi-squared distribution looks like, hold on a second. I'm going to do this. I want to get to the side here so I won't cover anything up later when I scroll. You'll see what I mean. So I want to draw the chi-squared test statistic for you, or I mean the chi-squared distribution, which is a right skewed distribution. As I said, everything is positive, and the further right you go, the larger it gets. We have a 14. So the 14, I don't know exactly where, but let's just say here, this is where our chi-squared test statistic, and chi is the uppercase Greek letter chi-squared, and this chi-squared test statistic is 14.2. Right? And it defines a right tail here. All the chi-squared tests are right tailed. So here in this right tail is the p-value. Now we're going to need to compute degrees of freedom because the chi-squared statistic is different for different degrees of freedom. Usually when uh, we see this, you may have seen this before and we will see it again. It's usually related to one less than a sample size, but here we're not going to worry about the sample size so much as the number of categories. So it's one less than the number of categories. We have 10 categories, so we're looking at a degrees of freedom of nine, one less than the number of categories. Once we have that, we can find the p-value, and the p-value is going to be found by using a chi-square distribution right-tailed because we want the area in the right tail. So we are going to go to chi-square, and it's right here, chi-square.dis.rt, the chi-square distribution right-tail because we want the area in this right tail. That will be our p-value. The first input they call x is our chi-square test statistic, comma, then degrees of freedom, which are nine. Close the parenthesis, and we get 0.115, which is relatively large. So we have here then a p-value That is 0.11, I'll round that to 5. So we're looking at about 11.5% chance of getting a chi-squared value at least this big, because it's this big or larger. 11% chance. Remember, we consider small probability something less than 5%, and we define it by choosing an alpha. And for me, you might recall, I actually chose 0.025, all right, 0.025, which is, you know, half of the 5%, because I like to think of it as, um, 
what would you get if you're doing a one tail test comparable to a 95% confidence interval? Okay. So here we have then a p value that is greater than alpha. p value that is greater than alpha. So let's come back down here. And in our conclusion, first thing we want to note is the p-value is greater than our alpha of 0.025, so we fail to reject the null hypothesis. That means we are not supporting, I'm sorry, that means we are supporting the uniform distribution. So the sample data support that the digits in the lottery follow a uniform distribution, which is always what you want for random digits, a uniform distribution. S that means the differences, so let me just kind of make a note here, the differences between the observed and expected frequencies were likely due to random sampling error and are not statistically significant. That's what it means. So whenever we fail to reject the null hypothesis, we're saying that the difference between these observed and expected frequencies is likely due to random sampling error, not statistically significant. Well, what type of error might we have made here? Well, since we basically support the null hypothesis, since the null hypothesis is supported, we have here a possible type 2 error, because the type 2 error is supporting the null hypothesis when it is actually false. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching.